sapling initiative in Kenya, similar to the other country as a focus on improving productivity and profitability of livestock uh, enterprises. Uh, of course, in Kenya we were focusing on two value chains, uh, poultry and dairy, but I'll talk mostly or exclusively about the dairy activities that we were implementing in three counties in Kenya, the smallholder dairy systems, in collaboration with cooperatives and the dairy cooperatives and county government. There are specific technologies that were being promoted towards increasing productivity, you know, technologies and innovations in breeding, in animal health, and in feeds and forages. But the question was, how do we bring them together to bear on improving productivity at the farm level? So we needed a mechanism for integrating all these uh, technologies and innovations together so that the farmers could benefit from the, the synergy that you, you get when you bring all the technologies to work together as opposed to what previously we have done where we would find you know, ourselves working on particular interventions or technologies and was losing out on the complementary benefit of bringing the technologies together. So we thought about you know, how best to do this and we thought that, you know, focusing on improving productivity or using people who would look at the farm as a whole or in totality to look at how to improve productivity from every perspective would be people who are working with farmers directly on various interventions, trying to understand, you know, what are the limi limitations in each farm. And that requires extension services, because extension services are usually looking at farms in totality. The challenge is that the previous extension approaches have not been targeted, so they rely mostly on group training for farmers in, local, in localities that are far removed from the farm setting. So often when you bring people together, people are facing different limitations on their farms, but training them on one topic for everyone. So it's a more of a one-size-fits-all extension approach that do not take into account the differences or the variation in the problems and challenges farmers are facing at any one particular time. So we proposed to have an individualized extension approach that focuses on identifying the needs of the different farms and then developing uh, solutions with the farmers based on their particular needs or their main limitations that all the factors that are limiting their production and profitability of their enterprises. So we proposed to experiment or to test this individualized extension approach where we would have an extension person that is dedicated to specific number of farmers visiting them at home, identifying their needs and based on those needs developing a development plan with them on how they want to grow productivity and turn their farms into profitable enterprises. And that is the, the basis for the Dairy Farmer Advisor Extension Approach. While we do not yet have uh, comprehensive or conclusive evidence on the impact of this model, uh, we have a strong feeling that being more targeted and farm or context specific, we expect that it would lead to increased adoption of appropriate practices. Anecdotal evidence that we see when we visit some of these farms shows that farmers are beginning to look at their cows differently and we believe that this is going to have an impact not just in terms of how they treat or handle their animals but also flow into impacts on productivity 
and profitability because the advisory is supposed to help farmers also organize or optimize on their resources so that they reduce cost of production and that would eventually lead to cost saving and eventually to profitability. So we expect that this should be a more superior uh, extension approach and could have a greater impact on behavior and results of, of farm practices. But uh, of course it comes with some challenges. So when we were testing this model, we rolled it out as a co-payment model because you know it's, it's, it's more of a private sector embedded extension approach. Uh, of course here run by cooperatives. So we are to convince farmers that there is need for them to pay for extension if they want to get more quality extension services. So we, the project paid for part of this service while farmers were expected to pay this through milk proceeds. Some of them pulled out of the co-payment process, therefore that somehow compromised the, the quality or, or the number of visits that they were receiving from the service providers. But some of these providers were quite, uh, the DFAs were quite proactive. So where they saw opportunity for change, they continued to provide the services even when the farmers were not paying. So that uh, brought back a challenge to us where we have been asking ourselves, so if we finally find out that this model is more effective in terms of changing practices and bearing results on farms, what is the best way through which we can sustain this model? And our current conversation is leaning towards identifying businesses within the cooperative or within the milk value chain that would benefit most from advisory services. So one of some of the businesses that benefit most are the businesses that actually sell inputs, whether it is feeds, hard health products, and all that. When farmers are more aware and appreciate the values of these technologies and inputs, then they continue to demand more from this. And from some simulations that we have, it shows that you know if farmers adopt better feeding technologies based on silage and concentrates and all these, there is a huge business opportunity for people who are doing this kind of business. And the revenues or meeting this increased demand far outweighs the cost of sustaining a DFA. If you are talking about one DFA supporting 50 farmers, and each one of these 50 farmers demanding certain amount of, of forages, whether it's hay or silage and concentrates, that revenue stream can comfortably pay for the DFA and still the businesses would be making money. So our task is to demonstrate that to these various businesses and show them that this is actually where extension should be anchored. Extension should actually be anchored where it makes business sense so that extensions become like a marketing wing of those businesses. Yeah, so we like to explore that option with very many other businesses that are involved in sale of inputs. And one of the businesses that have shown interest is the business that is being run by our partner, a Performator. They run a business that is geared towards supply of feed. They are establishing feed centers. This feed center business is being managed through another subsidiary they have called Cowdish. Cowdish is setting up uh, feed centers where they do TMR, total mixed ration, composed of hay, silage, and concentrates. And they are trying to calibrate this for different types of cows because from their feed trials, it shows that with a proper TMR, you can actually double milk, product, uh, milk productivity per cow. And therefore, they need somebody who can go out, talk to farmers, and demonstrate to them that there is this feed product that we have that would help you grow your uh, productivity and profitability as a way of creating demand for the feed products that they are marketing. And after our experiment with them, they really strongly feel that they really want to embed the DFAs in each of the feed centers and uh, they have gotten some support from you know, financial sector deepening uh, 
uh, some financial support to be able to set up feed centers. And when they shared together with us uh, the, the intention uh, with FSD, I think FSD was very keen and they have insisted that they want to test the DFA as part of those businesses. So we see that as an opportunity of sustaining uh, this model going forward and uh, you know, bringing together other innovations around the DFA that can make it more sustainable. Equity Bank, as I've also shown some interest in the dairy farmer advisor approach because they see it as an opportunity to support young people who are graduating from middle level colleges to set up businesses in the dairy value chain. And one of the things that, why they think it is very important to have these people is because it will, may provide them the opportunity to create a pool of farmers whom they can uh, lend to. They have been having difficulty lending to smallholder farmers because of the risks involved in dairy farming. But they think if there is somebody who's walking the journey with the dairy farmer to help them in improve their production and increase their profitability, then the farmer is actually being de-risked. And therefore they see the opportunity to grow farmers to become viable uh, borrowers based on this the risking mechanism that is enhanced through these embedded advisory services.